Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Piyush and in the previous video, we have seen that what are the new features that are launched in Next.js 13. So in this video, I thought why not to make a small crash course type of a thing and try all the new features offered by Next.js 13. So as you can see that Next.js 13 brings a lot of features such as layout, server component, streaming, turbo pack. So let's try to play around with these things. Okay. In Next.js. So let's first try, uh, let's first try to create a new next project. So I'll go to my desktop and how to create a new next app. That is simple as a yarn create next app. Okay. So just yarn create next app and let's make it as a new tutorial. Okay. And let's wait for the next app to get loaded or get initialized. So our next app is now ready. So let's see what all features we get in XS 13. So first things first, that is turbo pack. Okay. So let's try the turbo pack and how fast is it? So in order to enable turbo pack, what you need to do, you need to change your dev command. So I'll say a uh, hyphen hyphen turbo, and this will enable turbo pack in my app. So I can close the server. I can stop the server and I'll say yarn dev dev. Now you can see my turbo pack is running, right? Let me zoom in a little bit. So my turbo pack is now running. It is in alpha stage. So don't use it in your production or anything. And this turbo pack has a lot of bugs right now because I have tested turbo pack. So there are so many bugs in the turbo pack, but it is extremely fast. So as you can see, already I'm getting some error. So if I hit a refresh, okay, so let's hit a refresh. So yeah. So now, as you can see, my turbo pack is running and it next year says that turbo pack is really fast. So if you're working on a very big project or a big scale project, then only you can see a difference in the speed, but currently it's just a boilerplate code. So yeah, it's extremely fast. Like it took a uh, 520 milliseconds to build this page, but this is a boilerplate code. So maybe so, so in, in order to enable turbo pack, you just need to have hyphen hyphen turbo and your turbo pack will be enabled. So this was one feature that was uh, announced in next year's 13, the turbo pack. The main feature that I'm excited to test is this app directory. So this is currently in beta version. So earlier, what we used to do, we used to have this pages folder and whatever we create in this pages folder was automatically uh, routed towards a route, right? So what they have changed, they said that you no longer need a pages. Okay. So you no longer need a pages instead, what you can do, you can have a app folder. Okay. And this app folder has a lot of more features like layout, error boundary loading, which is not supported in the pages. So in app, you need something named as layout.jsx. Okay. So layout.js page. So now what is this layout page? So this is the entry point of your whole application. So in this, what you have to do, you have to create a layout. So what I can do, I can say export default layout, uh, export default function, uh, layout, right? So I can export a default function and return a HTML. Okay. A HTML. And then in HTML, I can have a body and in this body, what I can do, I can render the children. So I can destructure children from here and I can render the children here, right? So this is my uh, normal layout and let's also make a head tag and in head I can have a title that is my app. So if I close my server and hit a refresh and refresh this particular tab. So as you can see, nothing is appearing here right now. Okay. So now what I can do, I can have a page folder. So I can say page.js and whatever I create in this page will be uh, displayed in this children. Okay. So I can say export default page okay only page export default function page and i can say return h1 saying home page so uh seems like there is some issue with the turbo pack yeah so now it's running so as you can see that i'm getting my home page and notice one thing what is my title my title is my app which is coming from this layout so what is this layout basically what you can do you can have your you know custom layout a uh, common layout and every pay, every child will follow this layout. So what I can do, I can even have a nav bar here. So what I can say, I can say nav and let's say this is my logo. So you can see first my logo is appearing because this is the layout and in this children, what is rendering the page component, right? And similarly, uh, like we have dynamic routes in pages folder, you can have dynamic routes in this app folder. So I can say a dashboard. Okay. So this is my route 
and inside this dashboard i can again have a layout so i can say layout.js uh, let's create a layout for our dashboard so i'll say export default layout and uh, now i don't want to import it M export default function layout and in this layout let's say i return okay a return and a nav okay a, 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 not a nav a div in this div i can have a nav and in this navigation what i can do i can have you know a button so i can say button one so i can have couple of buttons here one uh, this should be three two and four and then what i can do similarly we did in the previous layout so i can have children and i can render the children here okay now what will happen my new route is created that is slash dashboard so i can say slash dash board so it says 404 because we haven't made the page.js file yet so i'll say page.js so export default function page okay and here i can say return that h1 that this is my dashboard yeah so now it should work yeah so now you can see what's happening if i go to dashboard first my logo is appearing from where that logo is coming this layout because this is a global layout then in the dashboard we have a layout file then this particular layout is rendering and in this layout this particular page is getting rendered so what you can do you can have your common layouts inside this layout.js file and automatically the layout will be applied by the next years and inside the page you can have your original code so this was the layouts which is only supported in the app directory if you try to do this in your next uh, in your pages directory this thing will not work so this will only work in the app directory so you can have a layout for defining the layout you can have a page where the actual code goes okay so similarly what you can do you can even have a loading page so i can say loading.js right and whatever i export here so if my function is loading this particular file will be rendered so i can say export default function loading right and i can say return h1 that this is a loading spinner let's say this is a loading spinner so what will happen when my function is actually loading okay loading some data so what next will do next year's will see that okay your your function is currently you know in a loading stage so it will render the loading page and then what it, what it will do it will render the layout and the page so basically what's going to happen if you are fetching some kind of data in your loading uh, in your page or jsx so this particular loading file will be rendered on the screen so this is also a great feature to handle the loading state now let's talk about static site generation server side rendering and client side rendering okay so in the pages folder what we used to do we used to say you know uh, get server side props get static props get static paths but in app dot app folder we don't have that thing okay so what we can do uh, let's say that i want to you know get some data here so what i first of all what i can do i can create a function so i will say uh, my function okay so let's create a function that is get data okay so this is my get data and let's say this is an async function now what i can do i can make an api call here so i'll say const response equals await and then fetch and then what you can do you can fetch something here okay and then what you can do you can just return response.json right and how to use this particular uh, function you can just say const data equals await and then you can say get data right now if you do this particular thing only absolute uh, urls are supported okay so you can say like uh, you know https slash slash google.com anything like your api data basically so if you hit a refresh yeah so uh like obviously you will get an error because uh, you cannot fetch google.com but see what will happen this particular thing is currently doing a server side rendering for me by default so out of the box what you get you get server side rendering so what it will do first of all it will get this data on the server it will return you the data render the page and then return the page to you so by default it gives you server side rendering but what if i want to make it static side generation like statically so what you can do you can just pass a cache parameter okay caches and you can say a force cache okay so not like this so you can pass a object here say caches and you can say force cache now this is a force cached page what that means that means that this is a statically generated page if i don't give anything then it's a server side rendered page if i give force cache then it's a static generated pages 
okay which is great you can even do a revalidate so you can pass a next and then you can say revalidate 10 so this is incremental site generation so after every 10 seconds this page will be regenerated by the vocal so this is also a great thing so you can say like cache and then you can say like no store all uh, right no store and no cache for client side rendering and server side rendering so like they have you know reduced a work of get static site props get static site paths and all that thing so now there is just this fetch function which is overrided by the react so what you need to do you just need to say like force cache correct and if you do a force cache then it's a server a static generated if you don't think if you don't give anything then it's a server side rendered page okay which is a great thing so uh, like it gives you server components or server side rendering out of the box and similarly what if you have a you know dynamic route let's say you can create a dynamic route id right and inside this you can have a page.js folder now what you want to do you want to do something similar to known as you know get static paths so for get static paths what they have done if you go to their beta documentation so you'll see a beta documentation link here yeah so this is their beta documentation and if i go to fetching get static parameters so you you can actually do something like this so you can say get static params and here you can return okay return an array of id let's say one so basically this is equivalent to saying you know get server side uh, get static paths so they have like renamed it to generate static params and from where this id is coming because my uh, folder name is id so you can just give your parameters here like id2 and then what you can do you can have a async function so async function uh, get data right so uh, like you can see here uh, where it's that if you go to caching right so yeah so you, what you can do you can basically have a function get data and this will uh, get a parameter of saying params correct and inside so from this params what you can do you can basically make a api call okay and you can say that slash users okay and slash you can what you can say you can say params dot id so this should be string literal okay so this should be string literal so that's how you can use the id and you need to pass one more parameter that is caches and you need to force cache it because this is a statically generated page okay so that's how you can do a static site generation incremental you just give need to give a revalidate of any value so that is incremental and by default they are server side rendered pages and if you want to do a client side rendering you can just create your own custom hook like use swr or use hook from the react and that will be client side rendered pages so this was a thing but this is currently in beta so things are not working that great like it sometimes throws an error which doesn't even make a sense so just refreshing the server solves it so what i would recommend you is don't use this turbo okay don't use just use the yarn dev but if you use the yarn dev you can see that your app directory will not work okay so what you need to do you need to go to next js you need to say experimental okay and in this you can say app directory to true now your experimental app directory will work now you can hit a refresh and you can see that your first of all loading spinner came and then it got an error because uh if i go to my page right uh what was the thing it was page because we are trying to fetch a wrong url so currently nextjs 13 has a lots of bugs and i will highly recommend you to not to use nextjs 13 as of now let these things get stable like uh the app thing the app directory currently it's in beta so wait for it to get stable and wait for the turbo pack to actually get stable then only it's you know worth trying and this was the app directory and we have seen turbo pack and then there is next font which is actually great so what you can do you can actually add a package yarn add uh, that is at the rate next slash font okay so applying fonts is really easy with nextjs 13 so what you can do just install this package and then go to your layout and what you can do first of all you need to import a import a font so you can say import something from at the rate next font slash google and let's say i want to import a inter for a inter font so i can say enter then what you need to do you need to just say that enter 
equals enter right and then to this html i can say class name equals enter dot class name now as soon as i go to let's say my home page uh, and we need to start the server and let's reload so now you can see that my inter font is now implemented so this thing is really great this uh, font is great but also this is in beta version as of now so i would highly recommend you to wait for the next year's 13 like this app and to get stable uh, and don't use it as of now because there are lots of bugs so this was a really short video on Next.js 13 features, like what all Next.js 13 is offering, how these things are going to work once they are stable. So I hope you like the video. Uh, if you like the video, do hit the subscribe button. So let's meet you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye. Take care.